IQ was once a top pick and ranked and even in Pro League, but as time has gone on, the art of playing IQ has been lost almost entirely. Nowadays, IQ players are branded fraggers abusing the best LMG in the game, with most people not even knowing she has a gadget, let alone using it properly. However, with the rise of Valkyrie's popularity and her overwhelming strength as a defensive operator, I think it's important to reintroduce IQ to the world as a top tier attacking pick and ranked. IQ is equipped with a wrist mounted scanner that can detect any and all electronic gadgets from both attackers and defenders within 20 meters of the scanner. It can only be used with your secondary P12, leaving you vulnerable and without your strongest part of your kit, your gun. As a 3 speed 1 armor with an amazing selection of 3 of the best guns available to attackers, you'll never be lacking in the firepower department. Her gadget, while not the strongest, is a super solid counter to the best Valk and Pulse players and can assist hard breachers with accurate gadget clear. At her worst, IQ is a potent fragging operator, and at her best, she's a nightmare for any defender with an electronic gadget. Let's start off with her loadout. IQ has three excellent guns, two assault rifles and one LMG. Each of these guns have their own pros and cons. The AUG A2 hits the hardest, but takes up a large chunk of your screen. The 5.52 Commando is lightweight and low recoil, but lacks some of the stopping power of the other two. And the G8A1 really hits like a truck with a satisfying fire rate, but lacks flexibility in terms of attachments, namely scopes. Each of these guns more or less come down to personal preference. I would have to recommend the G8 with angled grip, compensator, and hollow, but none of these guns have severe recoil or any real shortcomings that are worth mentioning. With the G8, you're given more flexibility in terms of pre-firing with a large magazine as well as a fast ADS time. However, you're not going to have any magnified scopes, so if that's a deal breaker for you, you have to look at the other guns. For the P12, you have the option of running a suppressor to mask your shots as you use the scanner, but personally, I wouldn't recommend it. The reason I don't run or recommend suppressor is that in higher ELO lobbies, people are going to understand where IQ pushes from and where the shots should generally be coming from. So the suppressor really won't do anything. The point of a suppressor is to mask your sound and where your shots are coming from. In higher ELO, having extremely good game sense is very common, so the suppressor is honestly going to be more hassle than it's worth. If you do get jumped by someone and you have to shoot someone with a pistol, muzzle break is going to be a lot better. It's far easier to get a kill with muzzle break than is a suppressor. But in my experience of playing IQ, having to kill someone with a pistol is way more common than the suppressor actually helping me clear stuff undetected. Moving on to secondary gadgets, I would recommend Claymore over breach charges by default, but you can always choose breaches if you need them for a specific strat or push. As IQ, you're playing vertically most of the time to clear gadgets from below or above, so having that Claymore to protect your flank just a little bit more can be extremely useful. All right, now moving on to IQ's gadget. As I mentioned previously, IQ is a wrist-mounted scanner that can detect and align any electronic gadget within 20 meters. This includes anything running on electricity for both attackers and defenders. Because of this, it's important to learn what the outlines look like of each gadget so you aren't picking off your own team's drones. When using this gadget, you'll be forced to use your pistol, so making sure that you aren't exposed or in danger while using it is crucial. Only use the gadget when you're sure the surrounding area is clear or you have a teammate watching important angles for you. In general, always be ready to hop off your scanner and never use it for more than 5-10 to 10 seconds at a time to prevent being caught off guard. On top of the usual Valk cams and Echo drones, there are some lesser known things with IQ's gadget that make her even stronger. When enemies are disabling the planet diffuser, you're able to see their phone while they're in the animation, meaning you can wallbang or floorbang very reliably. Just, if you're gonna floorbang, make sure you don't hit the metal beams in the floor if you're relying on this to win a round. If you hear yourself hitting metal, you have to strafe around and change where you're aiming at so that you're not hitting the floor beams. Otherwise, you could run into some very awkward situations. Dokubi calls will make defenders' phones visible, as will a defender sitting on cams. One of the big interactions that IQ has that not many people know about is interacting with handheld gadgets. This means Pulse's scanner, defenders' phones, and even Vigil Warden's abilities. All of these can be detected by IQ, leading to some nasty wallbangs. If you're playing with someone you trust and the other team brings a vigil, you can have them drone the vigil, forcing him to activate his scanner so you can locate him and kill him through a floor or wall quickly. The same thing is with Pulse. Your scanner has more than double the range of Pulse, so if you can bait one of your teammates to draw out that Pulse scanner, you can get an easy floor bang before you can throw a Nitro and do any damage. In the current meta, IQ is meant to be a fragging operator. Her guns are built around this and her gadget can be used fast enough to be deployed on the move. As one of the fastest attacking operators, you want to be taking gunfights quickly and swinging your opponents with confidence, especially when you have the G8 on your side. While I shouldn't ignore your team, you will rarely need to do more than clear a few gadgets before you're free to cause havoc on your own. 
IQ is by no means the best operator in the game, but in the current meta, she most definitely has a place that should not be understated. Even though she lacks some of the utility clear that other prominent fraggers bring, her combination of speed, firepower, and potential for some nasty wellbeings makes her a potent fragger who can dictate entire rounds with her electronic scanner. On top of this, with the recent nerfs to Ash and Zofia, IQ is one of the most straightforward fraggers to play, with very simple guns and a very simple to understand gadget that also has a high skill ceiling. So if you're a new player, or a veteran who just doesn't know where to go with their attacking style, IQ is a great operator to pick up. And one final secret, if the bomb's not detected, IQ's gadget can detect and give you credit for finding the bombs. So hey, extra 100 points every round, I'm not complaining. Only a super small percentage of people are subbed, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. In this video, I'm just going to be going over my warm-up routine and why I do what I do. I've developed this over six years of playing the game and over a thousand hours of playing competitively, and this warm-up routine has helped me perform my best.